I'll just do a little quick intro on myself. My name is Julieta Morade. I'm originally from Argentina, so hoping that some of you guys are from Central and South America. Um, and my background is actually in architecture and structural engineering. I got my master's at UC Berkeley in structural, and then I worked at AirUp for a few years as a structural engineer, getting to work on really interesting designs for high-rise buildings and bridges, and then ended up falling in love with really the innovation side of construction technology. And so for a few years, I was heading the research and development program at New Story, which I'll be talking a little bit more about throughout this presentation. And now I'm a partner at Home Team Ventures, which is now a kickoff venture fund from New Story, where we're investing into early stage startups in construction technology. So very excited to share more about New Story and about Home Team Ventures throughout this presentation. And really looking at the case study of how a small nonprofit with a small startup was able to 3D print the very first housing community in the world. So really what the point of this presentation is, is to talk more about what it means to be using research and development and innovation for social impact and why we need to have more technologists, entrepreneurs and innovators in the space of impact and using those technologies to really have an effect on humanity. And so more specifically with New Story and Home Team, what we're focusing on is the issue of homelessness. So really looking at construction technology for affordable housing crisis and how we could start solving issues in the cost, speed, and quality of construction. And why we care about this mission in particular is because emerging technologies rarely reach those who need it most first. So during natural disasters, during things like the pandemic, those that are affected most are the bottom billion and in innovations where we really need them in construction to be affecting the housing sector and the crisis rarely reaches the bottom billion first. And so throughout this presentation and really with our case study of 3D printing, I wanna highlight how we are using innovation again, first to reach the bottom billion and to solve some of the world's toughest challenges. And so if you know anything about New Story or about Icon, you've probably heard about our 3D printed community. So here is a picture of the very first 3D printed house in the world in history. This was printed as a prototype for our 3D printed community in Nacajuca, Mexico. And this home is using US building codes. So again, very first permitted home that's 3D printed. And we did this with a use case in mind to be using it for affordable housing units. So it's really the best case study of looking at how we could be using innovation technology first for social impact. So throughout this presentation, what I'll be sharing is more of the journey of new story and our theory of change to be applying innovation for social impact first. Second, how we were able to do this with this case study of 3D printing in such a short amount of time by applying this innovation in an emerging market. And then third, what we are doing to actually scale more innovations in the space of social impact by starting a venture fund called Home Team Ventures, which I'll share at the end. So just to start off, I really want to kick off the why. The reason why we believe it is so important to be thinking of this theory of change, thinking about why innovation should be applied first for social impact. And it is because today there's 1.6 billion people in the world who don't have access to adequate shelter. What that means is that there's 1.6 billion people who don't have a home to go to at night, who don't have access to roofing or even a floor in their home, somewhere to sleep. And this number is increasing to 3 billion by 2050. So at this number that we're accelerating to of homes that we need, the, the huge demand that we're getting, it will be impossible with today's construction techniques and abilities to be building this kind of supply. So demand is heavily outweighing supply and we're seeing this increasing issue every single year. And one of the fundamental reasons we believe that there is this issue is because the construction industry has been building the same way for over a hundred years. So what that means is that we've been building homes the same way and the cost, speed and quality at which we're building have been getting higher or worse every single year progressively. So we know that if we don't tap into the sector and rethink how we are building, we will never be able to solve this challenge. So our mission at New Story is to pioneer solutions to end this global homelessness crisis. So the pioneer word really means for us, how can we be looking at things and not looking at the status quo? How can we be looking at things differently? So not looking at how we've been building for over a hundred years, but really tapping into innovation, tapping into questioning how we've always been doing it and how we could be doing it differently to reduce cost of building, to increase speed at which we're building and to increase the quality and our standards at which we're building. So we could start chipping away this issue at every single part of the value chain. 
So to give you some context on New Story, New Story is a nonprofit. We started through Y Combinator, Silicon Valley's biggest incubator over five years ago. We were actually one of the first nonprofits to go through YC. So companies like Airbnb and Uber going through YC, their trajectory looks a lot different. New Story being one of the first nonprofits to go through this incubator meant that we were looking at it from the impact lens. However, we were also looking at it from a tech mindset. How can we think more like the big tech firms? How can we think about the product development stages and customer discovery and really think through adopting innovation differently than most traditional nonprofits? So what that meant for us is if we wanted to tackle the homelessness crisis, we first need to walk the walk through customer discovery. So what that means is we need to work with federal governments, state governments, local governments to build affordable housing units with them. So if we're building with them, we can understand what their biggest pain points are in building, because we know if they're facing those pain points in affordable housing strategies, then we know other governments, other NGOs, other nonprofits are also facing those issues. And if we could start tapping into these critical issues of building, we could then figure out more innovative solutions. So over the past five years, we have built over 25 housing communities in Central and South America. So we have started off in Bolivia, in Haiti, El Salvador, and Mexico. Those are the four countries that we worked in up to date and we'll be growing our number. Every single one of these communities is very interesting because we adopt a strategy where we actually want to implement a new innovation into every single one of these communities so that we could start looking at which innovations are really tapping into solving some of these barriers that we're seeing. So these are some of the numbers that you might see. We built over 3,000 homes um, and impacted over 15,000 lives. So the strategy again is that we start off with customer discovery, working with governments and local partners to build affordable housing units with them. Through that, we understand in every single community that we build, what are the major challenges? And over the past five years, we've noticed that those major challenges fall within three big buckets. The first is cost. So the cost of building materials is too high to even make ends meet, to break even for developers to be wanting to provide affordable housing units. So there's not even enough affordable housing developers out there because the costs don't make sense. So we need to start looking at construction materials differently to reduce the cost and overall the cost of building. The second bucket is speed. So this 1.6 billion number I showed earlier that's increasing to 3 billion by 2050 will never be able to make a dent unless we actually increase the speed at which we are building. And so we're looking at construction technologies like industrialized construction, modular prefab, 3D printing, so we could build quicker, more efficiently, provide more units in the same amount of time. And the third category is quality assurance, quality control. So again, I mentioned that we work in four major countries, Bolivia, Haiti, El Salvador, and Mexico. And in those countries, in developing countries especially, the quality assurance and quality control could be detrimental to the design of the homes if there's a natural disaster or other events like that. And so we believe in technologies that could also be looking at inspections differently in the design process, construction process, and afterwards. So we can make sure that the homes are resilient, durable, and sustainable. So looking at these three major buckets of challenges, we're then able to understand better innovations that could be the highest leverage solutions for these challenges and start looking at the technology sector, start partnering with R&D partners in academia, in industry, partnering with startups so that we could bring their innovations to our communities to pilot them. The strategy that we use to do that, to bring in these innovators into every single one of these communities is through a strategy that we call create prove and share. So the first step is that we create a breakthrough. We understand the challenge, we figure out the highest leverage solutions, and we adopt a new innovation into that space by partnering with a startup, for example, where they have an early stage idea and they want to pilot it. They want to have a proof of concept in a community. So we partner with them, adapt their technology for the use case of affordable housing in our communities. And every community is almost like a lab test for them, where they're able to quickly iterate the design pilot it, understand what works, what doesn't, and then make the technology better. The second part is proving it. So proving it means we now have a proof of concept in a community and we're able to measure cost, speed, quality, and also how this is affecting the families living in these homes. Why that's so important to have a data impact program like we do at New Story is so that we could prove the impact side and then get more adoption later on. So that third bucket is to share solutions. 
So sharing solutions to us means that we are taking these technologies and sharing the impact to other governments, other NGOs, other nonprofits, so that they too could be using these technologies in their affordable housing units. And together, collectively, we could be solving the challenge of the crisis together by bringing in more technology and more adoption in the AEC space. One of the biggest issues we've always seen is that adoption is very difficult. It's, it's difficult to move the needle in the construction space. So we do this by truly proving it through numbers on the impact side. And a lot of people always ask, how did a small nonprofit, how did a small startup work together to 3D print the first community in the world? Why was it not a big entity or a big foundation that was able to achieve this? And the answer is actually very simple. If you go on to Apple TV, um, there's a free trial for seven days for anyone that just wants to try it. There is a season called Home, where New Story is featured in the season finale um, called Mexico, episode nine. And there's a documentary that walks through our journey of 3D printing the first community. And really why I love this documentary is that it highlights the families that we are serving. So the families that will be living in these 3D printed homes for the first time that currently live in the conditions that you're seeing in these pictures. They live in slums and ruins. They don't have access to flooring or roofing systems. If there's an earthquake or any other kind of natural disaster, their homes really go into ruins and they have to, they don't have a place to sleep at night. And obviously this affects their health, this affects their economic growth. And so by having this North Star of wanting to help these families, by knowing that the innovations that we are using are truly making a dent on social impact and on people's lives directly, has allowed us to do the troubleshooting much quicker because we have a mission alignment. We know that we are doing this for impact. So this documentary will walk you through the journey of these families and really the troubleshooting that ICON and News Story went through when working in Mexico in very harsh conditions with extreme heat difference in temperatures and also the difficulties of working in an emerging market in developing countries. But what always bonded us together and made us go through all the troubleshooting issues was knowing that we were serving these families. And so this theory of change of bringing more innovation into affordable housing or more innovation to solve some of the world's toughest problems really also means that we have an inspiration, we have a North Star, and we're able to troubleshoot together at a quicker pace and more efficiently. And again, this documentary highlights 3D printing specifically, but 3D printing is really just a part of our journey for a larger picture of a community that we're building. So like I mentioned before, every community that New Story builds, we look at adopting a new innovation, whether it's a software tool, hardware tool, design process material, we are always looking at iterating what kinds of technologies we could use. So 3D printing actually is just 20 homes out of 500 homes in a larger community that we are building in Nacajuca, Mexico. So it's a community that we are calling Innovation Village. And the reason for that it is because we want this community specifically to highlight some of the biggest innovations and trends we are seeing that could be successful for affordable housing to then again, create proof and then share with governments all around the world and other NGOs and nonprofits. And so 3D printing is just a small part of a lot of other innovations that we are piloting and testing in Innovation Village. And so these are just some stats about um, what is the makeup of Innovation Village, but really what makes Nacajuca, Mexico an Innovation Village so different from other communities in Mexico is three major things that I'll be covering in just a moment. Um, but going back as to why we even decide to do this in Mexico, why we, we want to be proving these technologies to governments in Mexico, is through looking at other case studies of where affordable housing went wrong. So in the early 2000s in Mexico, the federal government spent billions of dollars building affordable housing units um, that were very far away from the city centers, where a lot of the homes, like you could see in this picture, look like cookie cutter, copy pasted homes. They were westernized designs. They weren't fitted for the culture of the families that were going to live in them. So today, 15% of these homes are vacant. So what that means is that families are deciding to continue living in their slums versus living in these homes. And that is a major issue for the government of Mexico because it's a lot of dollars wasted in terms of building homes that are not being utilized. And so we want to highlight a community where we are really engaging the families in the design process so they feel the culture fit, they feel ownership of these homes, they want to live there. The homes are located close to where they currently live, so it's close to their services and jobs and other things. 
And additionally, we want to prove what kinds of technologies can we be using to be lowering the cost and increasing the speed of construction so the government can be spending less money to build even more homes. And so how we were able to do this is first to engage families, we use a, a design process called lean participatory design. So what that means is that any innovation that we bring in and any single home that we design, any community that we design, we actually engage the families with us in the design process. Looking back again on the fact that we started through Y Combinator and have more of the Silicon Valley tech mindset, we always do customer discovery. So what that means is we need to understand what our end users, our families need and want. And this is a critical path to when we're actually engaging a very new technology like 3D printing. And we need to have the families understand what the technology is, what it will look like, what it will feel like, so that they trust us to live in these homes, and then to feel comfortable living in these homes. And so how the process works for us is that we have a series of workshops in the design process of these homes, where the family members are engaged in designing their home layout as well as their community layout. And we separate gender and age so that everyone has a voice and speaks up. We've noticed that when we separate age and gender, um, people are more likely to be highlighting what their needs are for their home and community layouts. And they teach us, they, they know exactly what kinds of local materials are available, what local labor needs, and also other things. Like for example, if they wanna have a courtyard for safety reasons for their children, or if they would like to have in the front of their home an open window so they could have a local business that they wanna create. And we've noticed that by doing this, they feel ownership for generations to come. The second and probably the most important aspect, especially when it comes to new technology adoption, is relationships with governments. So in Nacajuca, Mexico, we have relationships and buy-in from the local, municipal, state, and federal governments of Mexico. And why this is critical is that when we want to acquire land and have the utilities accessible, it is very important to have those relationships with governments. One, to be able to have that land and utilities. And then two, when it comes to adoption of new innovation. So with 3D printing, we were able to very quickly get buy-in from these governments that trust us for home building to be bringing in this new technology to be printing, to be building. And what that also means is that they're more likely to share with other governments when the journey was successful. And so any single time that we want to do a proof of concept of a new innovation, especially when it's hardware for the built environment, it is a critical path to have the regulations on board. So in this case, it's governments for the approval of the technology, but then also for the sharing afterwards. So another aspect of Innovation Village is really the technologies that we're adopting. Like I mentioned before, every community that we build, we're looking at bringing in a new innovation, adopting it. And within Innovation Village, we're gonna have a series of different things that we are looking at, again, that are materials, hardware, and software, but these are some to name a few. And so the first one are eco blocks. So what those look like are just traditional CMU blocks, but instead of being traditional, they're 90% made with local soil and they're four times stronger than CMU blocks. And so again, looking at sustainability, looking at uh, access to local materials is very important to us for this community. The second is cool roofing material. And so this is actually a paint that you put onto roofs so you could passively cool down the temperature of inside the home. And why that's important is because temperature has a direct effect on health as well as economic prosperity. There's been a lot of studies done for that. And so we're working with some R&D partners to look at a cool roofing materials that we could be implementing. The third is mixed income levels. So designing the community for mixed income communities and being able to prove the impact. In urban planning and design, it is very critical to have more case studies out there proving that mixed income communities and designs are actually more successful and prosperous for the future. And the last, of course, is 3D printing and being able to prove the impact of doing this to increase the speed at which we're building and to decrease cost of every single unit home. So in terms of 3D printing, um, again, I urge you all to watch the Apple TV documentary. And on YouTube, there's also a great video that I'm showcasing here, and I'm, I'm hoping you're all able to see of what these homes look like. So again, this is the very first 3D printed home and community in the world. It was built by Icon in partnership with New Story. And what I love about this project, again, is that the very first time this innovation was ever adopted, it is for the homelessness crisis. It's to serve these families. So this theory of change of using innovation first for impact. And some of the major things to note is that we're able to build two homes every 24 hours. 
Um, we're using US building code. So what that means is that it is using the most strict regulations in terms of the structural design, especially in a seismic condition like uh, near Mexico City. And um, I'd be happy to share during the Q&A session any more information about the 3D printed homes themselves. But why this is such a good case study to highlight out of the, all the other innovations that we've actually proven is the ability to do a bo double bottom line approach. So what that means is that we were the first check in the door in ICON. We invested in ICON at the earliest stage of their research and development. And then that allowed them a pathway to grow their business quickly. So on one end, we are convincing innovators, entrepreneurs, technologists to work in the space of impact by adopting their technology and adapting it to the needs of developing countries for affordable housing. And on a second tier, we are also allowing them to grow their business incredibly quickly. The reason for that is because in the built environment, it's very difficult to have a proof of concept. It's not like in tech for cell phones where you could build a thousand different phones and iterate quickly. In the built environment, it's a lot more capital intensive to have this first proof of concept, which you need to then get venture capital funding to back you up if you want to grow your business. And so the case study with ICON is extremely interesting as a sample because at first we invested into ICON. We then allowed them to have a proof of concept community in Mexico by working alongside them as home builders, understanding what kinds of things we need to do in troubleshooting, how to adapt the technology by working with families in these communities and understanding what their needs are, designing for those needs, understanding local materials and labor. And once we had this full proof of concept community in Mexico, in the span of just one and a half to two years, then they were able to quickly scale by now having partnerships with NASA, Fannie Mae, and HUD in the US, and building in the US. So this idea of bringing a technology to an emerging market, scaling it quickly, and then now they're able to bring it back to the US because they have this proof and this idea that this is possible to do. So others come on board much quicker. So it was done in just two years, might have only been done in seven to 10 years if it was only done in the US. And of course, on, the, on terms of scaling the business, um, ICON is now valued at over 100 million and just closed their Series A at 35 million. So it's really this idea that businesses and early stage startups could be applying their technology for impact, doing a proof of concept for affordable housing in an emerging market, and then scaling quickly by having this concept approved first. So this case study with ICON and the success that came from it, coupled with the idea that the construction sector is the largest market in the world currently, but one of the least digitized, has allowed us to think more deeply about how to scale this theory of change. So I love this graph because it highlights every single industry vertical in the first column. And you can see that construction is at the very bottom, right above farming, in terms of how undigitized it is. So within automation, it is one of the least digitized sectors across the board. So what that means is there's a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of innovation that needs to be implemented and adoption from AEC. The AEC sector as a whole only invests about 0.5% of its value into R&D. So we know that the industry needs to be tapped into. So that is why we've decided to scale our ability to invest in more early stage startups, just like ICON, by starting home team ventures. So we just launched uh, Home Team Ventures this year in 2020, and we are seeking to invest in more early stage companies that could have an impact on construction as a whole and a direct impact on affordable housing. Again, by looking at how we could be finding hardware, software, material science, design process solutions that could have a dent on the affordable housing crisis. If we look at the entire construction value chain, and along every single segment of it, find startups that are tackling cost, speed, and quality issues at every single bucket. And so what that looks like for us is that we are using a double bottom line approach. On one end, because we are finding startups that we could offer a growth in terms of their scalability, like we did with ICON, by having a proof of concept, by having this home builder's mindset first and understanding with them how to scale their technology. And on another end, by having direct impact by implementing their technology for affordable housing. And how we're looking at that is that any technology, again, if it's hardware, a software, material science, a design process, we will look at the technology and see if it is applicable to reducing the cost, increasing the speed, and increasing the quality within the construction industry as a whole. 
So again, looking at the full construction value chain and if the technology is tapping into one of those segments. And then can this technology be used for affordable housing units? So that is exactly what we're trying to do, trying to find more icons out there that we could be partnering directly with to scale their technology. So if you are an early stage founder and you are interested in home team and partnering with us, or you are an investor, a limited partner that'd be interested in this emerging fund, please reach out to me. I've included my email on this slide and I'd be happy to share in the chat as well. Thank you all.